Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sam Rochel and welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast where we break down some of the latest poultry uh, nutrition research and digest it for you in approximately 10 minutes. Uh, today I have another great episode uh, with Dr. Edgar Oviedo from North Carolina State University. How are you doing Dr. Oviedo? Pretty well Sam, how are you doing? Doing good, doing good. Uh, I know uh, many people know you from uh, your extension activities and you host a lot of uh, different courses and, and uh, webinars and activities. So uh, you're very well known across the world. But for those that uh, don't know you, a little bit of background. I know you did your PhD at University of uh, Arkansas and then spent uh, a few years at uh, Stephen F. Austin uh, before joining the, the faculty at North Carolina State uh, where you're now uh, Professor of, of Broiler Nutrition, Management, and, and Data Analytics. Is that correct? Correct, Sam. That's, that's, that's my job now. And, and I know most of our, our audience is going to be familiar with, um, you know, the importance of, of characterizing soybean meal and doing so using NIR. Uh, but just for a brief background, which is, I think, is the foundation of these projects, um, can you kind of describe the process of, of this? Again, you mentioned you've worked with some other uh, companies on this, but the process of the sample collection, um, you know, getting the uh, the analyses, uh, which analyses you're looking at, and then if you're doing any, are you doing correlations on that between uh, potential in vivo utilization, AME, amino acid digestibility as well. Can you kind of go through the workflow of, the, of that pro project? Yes, well, in reality, it's several projects. Uh, in, in one of them, for example, uh, we work uh, with Adicio. They have this uh, uh, service that are called the PE, is uh, the Precision Nutrition. And uh, then uh, what uh, they have done is to create these um, uh, calibration curves that are uh, uh, direct calibrations, that, which is different from the traditional method. So the calibration is done actually with the feed and the excreta contents. And in that way, they started about uh, almost 30 years ago when, when this company even uh, had another name. It was a, uh, an original company. They started with this process. And uh, in this way, uh, when they get an ingredient, then ca they can predict what will be the energy value, the, um, 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 also the digestibility values. Uh, because of that direct calibration that takes into consideration um, the spectra that both the, all the proximate the contents that we probably always take into consideration, like protein, the fiber, the heat track, and uh, the, uh, uh, the nitrogen free extract, those, those aspects that normally are in the equations are considered. But there are other aspects, for example, that are very important and now have been discovered that, for example, the oligosaccharide content, that is a, a, a variation that causes changes on, on the energy. So then all these other uh, um, ingredients that sometimes we um, don't in include in a, in, in a regular equation are um, um, also included when, when you do direct calibration. So then they have these uh, analysis, I mean, these calibrations that they, that are done in this manner. And uh, also, um, they also do the uh, calibration with um, estimating the, the amino acid content. So we have energy uh, in vivo, uh, apparent metabolizable energy and corrected by nitrogen. And uh, we also have the digestibility and the amino acid content. So in this case, well, in this project, what we did was to evaluate that uh, big database and determine if they were able to um, 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 separate the soybeans according to the origin, if they really differences, and, and through the years. We did it in, in five years, and in fact, we were able to uh, determine the same differences that others have been reporting when they do analysis of a few samples. The difference here is that we were working with more than 100,000 samples. After we did some cleaning, uh, because there was no um, clear understanding sometimes on the on confirmation of the origin uh, provided, uh, didn't have a, a clear idea, or uh, there were other details, outliers in at least one of the parameters. So we took out 
all the data that wasn't completely sure, uh, we ended up with about 85,000 samples. Uh, and uh, in other occasions, when, when this uh, type of analysis is uh, segregating by origin, um, and in those uh, experiments, they have worked maybe with maximum uh, 500 samples, uh, 300 samples. And so here we have a, a big power and additionally, again, the energy and the digestibility are estimated almost like looking at uh, experiments in vivo. So we have um, different values of experiments. So we, we were able to determine those. We were able also to um, find that um, when we analyze this data of one calibration that does the energy and another calibration that take into consideration the digestibility, we are able to uh, match and actually determine that for soybeans, the most important is the digestibility of those ingredients. That varies also in, in between countries. So sometimes we see that uh, in general, the, the soybean meal from the US ended up to be a little bit higher in a few of the amino acids, but especially the digestibility is much better and they are more uniform uh, compared, for example, to Brazilian soybeans that uh, eventually they have a little higher protein, a few amino acids are even higher than any others, but their digestibility is lower. And uh, that is, is something that you can track also in the energy. So better digestibility of amino acids give you better energy. And that is what uh, several uh, in vivo studies are showing as well uh, lately. So that, that was uh, part of the analysis and, and looking at these uh, big data sets. One thing that looking through the literature that you sent me, um, I saw you had also done some work correlating um, the soybean meal, uh, whether that was solvent extracted, uh, extruded or full fat soybean meal back to the, to the origin of the beans and, and look at those correlations. Anything that you found that was surprising or as expected when we say, okay, we have the, the crude protein content of the bean, how does that relate to the, to the soybean meal? What did you find there? Yes. Uh, well, uh, definitely, uh, even that, that we tried a lot, we, we had a lot of samples uh, through many other experiments that we had done where we had the beans and we processed them to have a full fat product or we, we were able to obtain samples right entering into the plant and then samples of soybean meal just leaving the plant uh, on the same day through uh, many hours during the day. Uh, when we tried to do uh, the analysis of the soybean meal, solvent extracted, we, we were not able to good, get a good prediction of, of the uh, protein content and all that, most likely, of course, but due to the process of cleaning and, and separation that, that it suffers during the process. But interesting in that area is that the beans could, uh, uh, depending on the content of trypsin inhibitors, and these also were measured with NIRS, uh, with the amino NIR package of uh, Bonic, uh, looking at the bean uh, and the uh, trypsin content and looking at the soybean meal content, it was possible to predict. And, and we had noticed in, uh, in other projects that we, we are doing on, on trying to improve the uh, quality of the soybean meal and uh, looking at, at pre-harvest factors, is that when you uh, have beans that for weather, for the uh, genetic line, they are producing a lot of trypsin inhibitors, even that you have the best processing, uh, still they will be a little higher. So it depends a lot on the bean quality. So that, and that also observed in the soybean meal. But when you do the full fat, since you have all the ingredients, then the prediction of, of protein, the prediction of amino acids is possible. And also the trypsin inhibitors can be nicely uh, being uh, predicted. So we, we have this this data where we had uh, soybeans uh, before the extrusion and after the extrusion, and really uh, somebody when is purchasing the ingredients, then they can value those beans according to what they are going to obtain in a in a final product like like the um, the full fat soybean. So that is an, a nice prediction that we were able to do, and and the idea is to keep uh, increasing samples. We did it through two years. So the idea is to have a few more uh, and, and probably propose that equation uh, for people to, to use uh, and, and um, give value of the beans according to the nutrient content that they will see in the final product uh, when, when they are going to apply to animals. 
Very interesting. Yeah, that, that's really neat because, you know, classically in, cl- in, in our classes and things, we, we always learn that, you know, the final product soybean meal quality is so much a function of processing, but what you're finding is there's a lot of influence of, of the starting material in the, in the raw bean. That's, that's very neat. Yes, still you can predict some, but the prediction is is not that good. Probably we need more samples, but there is a relation always on on the bean quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very good. Okay, well, we're getting uh, close to our time here. Uh, you know, so just to take home uh, from what you learned, certainly that uh, there are differences in soybean mill uh, quality by origin, and so it's important to uh, pick a system and and get. Uh, confident and and proficient in that system and then apply that system uh, into the final matrix to really be able to see the value. Is that correct? Correct, exactly. So precision nutrition is is about measuring, but also uh, looking at those values and if if you feel confident, apply them to obtain the the monetary return. Great, great. Well, hey, I really appreciate it, Dr. Oviedo. Anything else you want to add to the conversation today? No, thank you, San. It has been a nice conversation, and I hope, we hope that this reach uh, to the people that, that needs to make these decisions, and hopefully we can uh, keep improving in, in poultry nutrition around the world. Great. Well, yeah, thank, thanks for all of your hard work. I know you've, uh, you always have a big team with you at the, the conferences, and so thanks to you and, and all of your students for, for that great work, and, and uh, thanks for joining us on the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Thank you, Sam. All right. Thank you. Hey everyone, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. And if you have a poultry nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it and share it with us, feel free to email the research link, uh, the paper where we can find it, or the abstract to hello at wisenetics.com. That's hello at wisenetics.com. And I look forward to hearing from you.